So there's two different options when you're an insurance agent. You can be captive or independent. If you're captive, it means that you work with one insurance company. So you are going to be always offering that insurance company solely. If you're independent, you can write and do write with multiple carriers and ideally then can shop a full market and offer different plans with different carriers. Welcome to the Listen for Life podcast with Genevieve Richardson. Genevieve is a speech-language pathologist rehabilitating adults with communication challenges after a stroke or due to a neurological impairment. Living with aphasia is hard. Caregiving is hard. You are not alone. Get equipped with knowledge from experts in the field and professionals you need to know. We'll hear stories and experiences from others who are navigating life with aphasia. So... Put your earphones in and take a walk outside. This isn't just a podcast. This is a community, a resource, and a support system. We're in this together. Do life. Dana Lastman is joining us this evening, and her handle is Medicare Dana, which I absolutely love as your website name. No one will forget it. So Dana Lastman is an independent insurance agent specializing in Medicare, which is right up my alley. Dana resides in Austin, Texas, and holds licenses nationwide and can service clients throughout the United States. Woohoo! You hear that? All my all my peeps out there. Dana is passionate about Medicare education so that those who are eligible for Medicare have all the resources to make an informed decision and ultimately protect their health and wealth. I love that. It's a good bio. Dana. Thank you. Thank you for joining me this evening. And I'm so grateful to our mutual friend, Mary Osborne, yourdementiatherapist.com for introducing us because your website is chock full of incredible information that most of our folks that are Medicare eligible haven't ever read before. Well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. And I love that we're both in the senior space and that we're both so passionate about getting seniors education and resources in ways that are really that are really ethical and that are really valuable. And I think that that's really really miss in the community right now. And so it's so nice to meet other people that are really striving for that within our population. So I'm so grateful to Mary as well. And I love to be able to provide valuable resources for our community. Wonderful. So let's jump right in. You are an independent Medicare agent. What on earth is that? (laughs) Good question. So There's two different options when you're an insurance agent. You can be captive or independent. If you're captive, it means that you work with one insurance company. So you are going to be always offering that insurance company solely. If you're independent, you can write and do write with multiple carriers and ideally then can shop a full market and offer different plans with different carriers. And the reason why I chose to be independent is because, especially within Medicare, Some of the Medicare plans are standardized, which means across the board in any state, they're the same coverage, the same benefits, but the insurance carriers can charge varying premiums, especially for seniors that are on a fixed income. If they're getting the same product, but one company charges significantly more than the other, that's important for the consumer. And we want to be able to showcase that the consumer should know that ahead of time and then be able to choose which carrier. They might like a particular carrier that charges more. And I think, you know, your decision is your decision, but have the education behind it. And so I think that being forthcoming and being really transparent about that is important. So as an independent agent, I can do that. Additionally, each year when you do have whichever plan you're on, the rates can increase. As an independent agent, one company might increase their rates very high one year. So depending on the person's background with their medical needs, they might be able to switch into that exact same plan, but with a different carrier and save money that month and for the month, you know, going on for the rest of the year. So to be an independent agent, there's a lot of options that you have to cater to the client, 
versus catering to an insurance carrier. Okay, so there's a lot to unpack there. I have some questions. So sure, fire away. <laughs> I know, like, let, like, let's get into this. <laughs> I, not only because I'm a Medicare Part B provider, I provide outpatient therapy. So I've, boy, has the steep, <laughs> the steepest learning curve, I'll tell you what, uh, being a clinician and offering it. But you talked about different carriers. So that's where I want to start with you. Because if I have a client coming to me and they've got the white card with the blue and red like swoop on the top that says Medicare, aren't they directly involved with the federal government and the federal government is paying their benefits? Yes, but also maybe no. So okay. that card that you <laughs> That card that you just specified, the black and white card, that is the Medicare beneficiary, beneficiary identifier, MBI number, and their Medicare card. That's going to have their Part A and Part B on there. Anyone who enrolls in Medicare enrolls in Part A and B. However, you then have an option to get a supplement to go along with original Medicare or get a Medicare Advantage plan. The original Medicare, which is Part A and B, doesn't fully cover someone. There's a lot of gaps and the gaps can be really, really pricey and they can expose someone to very high financial um, bills. And so most people either go the route of going with original Medicare and a supplement or Medicare Advantage. And they're two totally different programs, which is a lot of the confusion out there. So if someone is handing over their original Medicare card to you, as their provider or for any doctor that's a provider, then they're under original Medicare. And usually they have a supplement plan to go with it. If someone is on Medicare Advantage, the Medicare Advantage plan actually takes over the coordination of A and B. So those people actually tuck that Medicare card away. They don't need it. They don't give that to providers. They give the provider just the Medicare Advantage card. Mm. And, and that gets paid through the third-party insurance company that's managing the Medicare Advantage plan versus your client that gave you that Medicare, original Medicare card is getting their services paid via the federal government. Right. Yeah. And typically when you're, for somebody coming for outpatient speech pathology, uh, original Medicare Part B pays 80% of what is the allowed rate and then the supplement if there is one picks up that additional 20 percent and that's just for outpatient therapy that's we're not talking hospital bills that's Bro. what you're talking about the scary part for financial you know making sure your financial house is in order if you have that unexpected hospital stay and you get this ginormous, and that is my word, ginormous bill, <laughs> I've seen them, they are scary. Yeah, and that's why I stress so much education and I stress education when someone is 64, 64 and a half. Start learning the program because there are lots of different rules out there. There are different circumstances for different people, depending on if they're working, but then it depends on how large of a company they work for and what type of group plan and are they contributing to an HSA, a health savings account. All of this plays into whether or not they should enroll in Medicare, whether or not they'd get penalties if they enroll at certain times. So it's really not super straightforward, which is why it's so important to talk to an expert in Medicare, but also why that education is important is because that original Medicare plan and the Medicare Advantage plan are so different. They're different programs, they're different coverage, they're different benefits, they're different costs. And if someone isn't aware of what their options are and they choose one of those plans without knowing, you know, either, you know, some of the fine print or some of the things that aren't covered and then realize that after the fact, which usually happens, when they get a diagnosis or they need a treatment that's not covered, right? Just like you find out that you don't have like rental car insurance in a, on your auto policy when you're right. in an accident and you need to go rent a car for six months while it gets fixed. If you find out after the fact that you need medical coverage and the plan that you chose doesn't have it, you're most likely going to be declinable to switch out. 
And that's the part that's actually so heartbreaking being in this industry is that people weren't educated on the front end when they were making their decision. And then they find out on the back end that they are stuck. Wow. Uh, So that brings me to a story. Uh, I had started one of my clients on Medicare uh, towards the end of last year. And I checked his benefits when, uh, you know, we made the calendar transition to January 1st and we were good to go. He wasn't receiving any other services. So I knew that what I was seeing as far as his eligibility and all that was, was good. What we neglected to find out and we almost didn't find it out. So uh, just a little personal story. I was fighting with, um, submitting telepractice claims for folks in other states. And it was, again, that, that learning curve was steep. So there was a delay in me realizing that his particular claims were coming back denied, saying that there is no benefit for this person. But yet when I look on Medicare eligibility, it's, it's, right, it's right there. So, and being new to the whole system, you know. Anyways, I digress. What we found out, I talked to uh, my patient's wife. She had signed up for what she thought was like a pharmacy benefit, a part D I think is correct. And you'll have to talk to us a little more about some of those other parts. And what she had signed up for was an advantage plan that didn't cover speech therapy at all. And so luckily we caught it in time. We were able to both of us do some research and, you know, guide her because she wanted to stay on Medicare. The pharmacy outlay was not that extensive. She just thought, oh, this looks like it would be good. I'll just add it on, but it changed her whole plan. Anyway, we got it sorted before that March 31st deadline. So lucky that that you found it when you did and was able to get sorted. Now, this type of thing happens a lot. And this is the exact example that I was just saying of how different the plans are. So when you were saying that someone might give you an original Medicare card and Medicare Part B pays for 80% on original Medicare and the patient's responsible for 20. Now, we don't ever suggest someone just go on original Medicare because that exposure, 20% of Part B Part B is anything that's not admission to a hospital so or skilled nursing facility. So that's any outpatient facility. That's any, you know, anything that you go to a doctor for. So it could be, you know, dialysis, chemotherapy, 20% of chemotherapy is huge. Um, but even a colonoscopy, I mean, anything like that, that you're going to, that you're not admitted is falls under part B. So that exposure is just huge. So someone who's got Uh, potentially original Medicare and then a supplement plan would choose a supplement plan to cover those gaps. And many of them cover that 20%. That would be original Medicare. Someone who's on a Medicare Advantage plan is going to have different benefits and they may or may not have the same as original Medicare and a supplement. And many times they're not the same and they're able to negotiate and change what they get each year um, that's what actually coming off AEP is the one time of year for folks in a Medicare Advantage plan or prescription drug plan that they can make a change because they're not standardized and they're renegotiated. And you have to keep up with what's changed or what's not. And are the benefits change? Is the coverage change or the cost change? Because otherwise, you might think that you have certain coverage. Come to find out you don't because the plans change. But the difference between the two programs are so great as you just saw with your client that under original Medicare would have had complete coverage and under Medicare Advantage, none at all. And that out of pocket cost, I'm sure for your services and many other is outrageous. So it's really important to understand the program and have that education so that people can make informed decisions. So let's just cover the parts of Medicare just so everybody we're all on the same page and then we need to talk about the AEP and define that and be explicit about the dates and what people need to do and I just want to throw out and I'm going to say we're probably going to say it at least three times in this episode don't do Medicare alone this is my way Uh, there are agents like yourself 
that are knowledgeable and experienced and can help solve, solve these problems, give the education, help you formulate a path for what you and your partner, your family needs under Medicare. Definitely. And I would even say to people listening, if you're not of Medicare age, your parents, your grandparents, ask them. And, you know, a lot of times our parents and our grandparents, grandparents now I think are a little more open to talking about it. Sometimes parents are a little bit more, um, you know, restricted. They don't want to talk about their health and they, you know, it's that pride, which I completely understand, but just ask if they have an agent that they can talk to or that they call or that talks to them. Anyone who's on Medicare should have a dedicated agent committed to customer service that is both getting in touch with them every year, especially during AEP, which we'll go into a little bit more, but getting in touch with them, letting them know of any changes that are happening and that those people, if they have questions, have that agent's phone number and can call them. There are so many people out there that don't have an agent and someone might not have an agent for two reasons. One, maybe they signed up for Medicare by going directly to an insurance company on their own. And so if they go directly to an insurance company, you don't have a dedicated agent, you definitely don't have an unbiased dedicated agent, but that might be a reason. And then others signed up and that agent, unfortunately, and there's many of them out there, never got in touch with them. They sold them a policy and that was it. And so if that's someone's case, you know, or, you know, some people retired or just they haven't heard or they don't even know who their agent is for, for 10 years. There are a lot of us that are in the community that are licensed nationwide that can help, or even if they're not licensed nationwide, most reputable agents have a network and can at least put someone in touch with an agent in another state so that they know that that person is taken care of versus just cold calling an agent that you don't know if they're going to give you accurate information or not. Um. I hate to confess, I actually didn't know there was such a thing as a Medicare agent. I had, I just thought it, I just thought it happened. You get your 65, you retire, you get your sure Medicare card, go, go live, fly, be free. Um, yeah. And I've been well, in the industry think a really long time. That. I don't think you should, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions out there about Medicare. And one, even clients think that it's free. People that are turning 65, because you pay into it and you do, and people pay into it, you pay into it with your FICA taxes, but it's still not free. So that's something that is for some people a rude awakening as well. And it's so important, again, to start talking about this early because we're talking about financial planning. We're talking about people's income and a lot of them are on fixed income. And if they thought, that Medicare was free, and then they learn that it's not, that goes into their everyday spending. So I also work a lot with financial planners and wealth managers that are looking at, you know, planning for people's retirement, because part A, which you did, we wanted to go over part A covers hospitalization. So part A is going to be skilled nursing facility, home health care, um, and hospitalization. I like to say, think of anything admitted, A admitted. So if you're admitted to a hospital, if you're admitted to skilled nursing facility, if you're just in the hospital and you're getting observed and you don't actually get admitted, that's not part A, that's actually part B. So A is admitted and part A is something that if you are eligible for premium free, which is um, working 40 quarters, then you get that for, for no cost. I don't like to say free because you paid into it. It's no additional cost per month because you've now paid into it, you know, your, your working uh, life. But part B, which is basically everything else, that's your outpatient, your ambulatory care, your lab work, anything that you go to outside of being admitted, again, remember that A is covered under part B. And that is what you pay for. And those premiums in 2022, the premium was $170.10, but it's based on income. And it's based on income for an individual of $91,000 or less, and for a couple, $182,000 or less. So for high wage earners, they actually get an additional charge called IRMA, which stands for Income Related Monthly Adjusted Amount. So people that are high wage earners, depending on their bracket, and there's a bunch of different ones, get a, a higher charge. 
And it's something that's not really talked about that much out there. So a lot of people come to want to join Medicare and get shocked by these pharma charges. And it increases the cost. Again, why it's so important to A, talk to an expert and B, start planning early and why I work a lot with financial planners because the IRMA is really something that needs to be looked at and planned out. And if you, uh, IRS looks at your income taxes from two years prior. So they do a two-year look back. And if you're you know, a dollar over, you can have this large charge. So it's just important, and it's not to do anything unethical ever, but if you're planning on removing some, some money somewhere and it doesn't necessarily affect your bottom line and you might want to wait to take it out of whatever account, um, it's important to know what the, the rules are for those, those IRMA charges because people have moved money before that they didn't necessarily need, but they just wanted to take it out of like whatever it might be in their retirement planning and put into liquid form, but might not need it until a couple years. And now because of that, because it's taken out it on their, on their income tax return, they are spending an extra three to $500 a month on their, on their Medicare. And so it's, it's just that education. It's, it's that knowledge and knowing how to prepare and what some of the rules are. Cause if you don't know, you don't know. And that, Reminds me that with the turning of January 1st, there's going to be Medicare deductibles that some folks get surprised by, especially if they're yeah, brand new. And every Medicare. year they change. That's right. That's right. And they change every year. So it's why, it's why it shocks me that people, that agents will sign someone up and not talk to their clients and never have anything to do with them. Because especially that first year on Medicare, my clients are calling me all the time and I'm educating them because the Medicare program is very different from individual and group insurance that people are on their whole life. And it's once you get on it and understand it, it is pretty easy to understand, but it takes a while, just like anything else. Change is tough for anybody. Think about, you know, being on one plan your whole life and then come 65 or maybe 75 if someone's working in on a group plan. And again, if they're under the right circumstances, they might not have needed to get Medicare at 65, they might've been able to wait and they're on this brand new program. And it's you know confusing or they're getting bills and they don't really understand exactly what it is. What do they have to pay? What don't they? Where do they find information? Your agent is your point person. I am my client's point person, no matter what about Medicare. And I want them to call me because right now and what you'll start seeing AEP, which is the annual election period is coming up. And there's advertisements on the radio and on the television Everywhere. all over. And yes. people who are 65 and older get bombarded by phone calls and they don't know what's what. Even the most intelligent people, it has nothing to do with that. It's just they are designed to confuse you and they are designed to make you question, you know, what's going on to potentially switch you into a different plan. And so I have a lot of clients that will call and say, is this real? Is this right? Someone told me that they're calling for Medicare. And by the way, Medicare does not call you. That's they right. will not call you ever. So if someone that's says right. I'm calling for Medicare, that's a huge red flag. Someone might be calling from a Medicare division of a company, but it's not Medicare. And that's confusing to seniors. It would be confusing to any of us. Yeah. Going back to my example of my client that signed up for an Advantage plan. She saw it on the Medicare website. She showed it to me. And so she thought it was just original Medicare with this extra drug benefit. And so that what that for her was a really confusing and a sticking point. So good point. Is there a Medicare Part C? So Medicare Part C is Medicare Advantage. Okay. That's the Medicare Advantage. So Part A and Part B are original Medicare. And that's okay. what you, anyone who is eligible and enrolls, enrolls in. And a good distinction that, that people also don't realize is that you have to pay for your Part B premium regardless if you get Medicare Advantage or if you get a supplement plan. So paying for that Part B premium happens regardless. 
So when you enroll in Medicare, you have to stay enrolled in Medicare Part A and B. If you decide to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, which is Part C, then you have to make sure that you're still keeping up your payments for your Part B, otherwise your Part C would get removed because it's only, it's only viable if you have Part A and Part B in good standing. So that's something to just, people don't realize that to know. Um, but Part C is Medicare Advantage. And then Part D, which we haven't talked about, is the prescription drug plan. Now, under original Medicare and the supplement, people would enroll in a standalone prescription drug plan. If people choose to enroll in Part C, which is Medicare Advantage, many times they will bundle that with a prescription drug plan. Those plans are called MAPD plans, Medicare Advantage prescription drug plans. So they bundle it all in one. There are some Medicare Advantage plans that have standalone prescription drug coverage, but many of them bundle it. So that's also the difference. Now, some people enjoy having all of their medical and prescription drug in one bundle together. Uh, what I think that's some of the convenience for people, but what I think makes a prescription, a standalone prescription drug plan really nice outside of the medical under original Medicare is that it can be customized to the actual medications you're on. So uh, Medicare Advantage plan with their drugs will still be somewhat customizable, but you have to get a plan that has the medical part and the drugs all in one, where with the supplement plan, you can have your straight medical plan that covers its nationwide coverage under the supplement plan. Basically, you can go to any doctor, any specialist. There's no pre-authorizations, no prior approvals for original Medicare and a supplement as long as they accept original Medicare. So you travel and the Medicare and the supplement plan travels with you. You don't have to wait on anyone approving or denying, no third party to kind of accept that. Okay. And the prescription drug plan is catered as well. So drugs are tiered, tiered one through six. And so if someone's on really high tiered medications and someone's on really low tiered medications, they're most likely not gonna have the same prescription drug plan. The prescription drug plans all have a formulary to list a list, excuse me, of medications that that particular plan covers and different costs and percentages of how they cover them. So some drug plans cover high tiered medications really well, others don't. So if someone's just on like tier one generic medications, they're gonna be on a different prescription drug plan than someone that either might have a mixed bag of a bunch of different tiers or higher prescription drug plans. And each year as your drugs change, as your medical ailments change, your prescription drug plan would change too. So you can kind of customize that each year with that standalone. But only once a year during this, during I have to keep looking at time. APP. I, I, I'm learning my lingo. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's so a one time to change the prescription drug plan. So the Medicare Advantage plans and the prescription drug plans have a lock in period. And that's because they're renegotiated every year and the coverage, the benefits, the premiums, they all change. Again, just to reflect back to the supplement plans, they're standardized. They don't change every year. So you don't have a lock-in period. You can make a change on original Medicare and that supplement plan any day of the year. However, you have to pass medical underwriting. So that also goes way back to the beginning when I was saying when someone is enrolling in Medicare, it's the most important for me at least to get to them or for a ethical qualified agent to get to them to talk through all their options because that time period is also the first and only time, unless they are in a special enrollment, which there's not very many, that they have complete access to a supplement plan without medical underwriting or any recognition of pre-existing conditions. And that's huge. Important to know, yeah. Yeah, so if you have a medical condition, you're not gonna, you know, some of them you can pass medical underwriting. It's not every medical condition, but there are certain ones that are, always gonna be declinable. And then there's certain ones that are declinable within certain windows. So cancer diagnosis isn't always declinable, but depending on the carrier, it's either you know like three to five years 
of cancer-free and depending on how stable your medication is, things like that. So it's not a forever diagnosis that you can't get underwritten, but it just depends on the circumstance. So it's really important, especially if you have health issues, which decision, which program you, you go into and understanding what those gaps might be in the different programs, because some of them are great. So I think, uh, number one, um, I'm just going to pick a scene. I'm just going to say senior age or Medicare eligible. They kind of need to know what their medical history is and be upfront about it with you if you are their agent so that you can help them make the best decision for their coverage. I, yeah, I would say yes and no. I mean, typically, you know, I have a relationship with my clients where they can pay anything. I mean, there's nothing probably more confidential than your medical and financial future, right? But if someone doesn't want to completely expose, let's say, what, what's going on with them, they need to be able to understand at least the impact. So okay. if you do have a medical issue, then you may not be able to switch out of this plan because you might be declinable and what that means to that person. Ideally, being open about what they have medically is really important. If anyone would pass medical underwriting, they have to be open about that. There's a slew of questions that do ask very specific medical questions that we have to go through. So that means if someone is, let's say, 70 and maybe they're on a Medicare Advantage plan, like right now it's AEP coming up October 15th to December 7th is the one time of year to make a change to your prescription drug plan. It's also when you can enroll disenroll or switch from a Medicare Advantage plan. So if someone was in a Medicare Advantage plan and realized that they didn't like the coverage or they didn't feel like they got the procedure that they wanted, it was declined or whatnot, they have the opportunity during this time period, again, it's October 15th to December 7th, to switch back into original Medicare. But in order to do that, they have to pass medical underwriting. And in order to pass medical underwriting, this would be the time Genevieve, that they would have to be open about their medical background and answer a slew of questions that I would go over with them so that we'd even know if they even could potentially pass it. We wouldn't put someone through to the medical underwriting team of an insurance company if, if we know off the bat they're not going to pass it. This is something that they're going to go through and look at. And you have to be really honest because, of course, if you're not and they find something, you're either going to be declined right away or they're going to get approved and then they're going to do a look back and you're going to get de declined and have no insurance. I mean, that's just not the place to be in. It's really, you got to yeah. be ethical here. Disconcerting. Yeah. So um, that's, that's the time. I mean, ideally you want to be able to be open about your you know, health and whatnot, but some people are a little close about that. So knowing that your first choice your first decision of what you want to do when you turn 65 or when you're first enrolling in Medicare is a really important decision because you might not be able to switch back out of it. Um, do, does all this information stand for, let's say, somebody that's much younger, not retirement age, someone in their 30s who's had something like a brain aneurysm or a, a significant stroke where they now aren't able to work? and they qualify for Medicare? Great question. So uh, Medicare under 65 is for like, um, you know, medical disability. Um, and there's a couple other medical reasons um, that it could qualify someone for Medicare. It depends on the state, but typically it's a Medicare Advantage plan because to purchase a supplement plan under the disability is really expensive. So typically you see people that are on Medicare under 65 with Advantage plans. Um, and it's, it's not totally different. I mean, it's the same program, so to, so to speak. Um, but they just then when they turn 65, actually get that free path to join a supplement plan with no medical underwriting. So if someone is on an Advantage plan, because again, again, it's, it varies on state, but a lot of times they're just astronomically expensive for that supplement plan. Um, they can 
when they turn 65 have that opportunity, just like anyone else who turns 65, where there's no questions asked and they can get on a full coverage supplement plan. Okay. Yeah, I have, I have several clients that are under 65 that qualified for Medicare. Good to know. Okay, so yeah. annual enrollment period. Anything else other than October 15 through December 7th? What else do people need? Yeah. So, like I said a few times, this is the one time of year that you can make a change to your prescription drug plan, and this is where you can make some changes in Medicare. You can enroll, change, or disenroll in Medicare. Also, so there are time periods when you're supposed to enroll in Medicare and you're supposed to enroll in a prescription drug plan. Some people miss that window to enroll in, let's say, the prescription drug plan. So this is then the opportunity for them to enroll if it might be for the first time in that prescription drug plan. What we're going to start seeing is a lot of advertisements on TV and on the radio. And the advertisements are all typically 99.9% .9 Medicare Advantage. And the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, CMS, has really tried to crack down. Last year, they really tried to crack down on some of these advertisements. And we haven't seen it really make such a dent. And what they wanted to crack down on was the fact that these advertisements come out and they make blanket statements that make it sound like this program, Medicare Advantage, has, has a lot of free services, um, whether it's you can get money back from your uh, Medicare Part B, um, like free, free food delivery, free X, whatever it is, free X, Y, all of this stuff. But really, it's for a really small subset of people in one limited service area that may qualify for this. But instead, they make a blanket statement. They use you know, a lot of images that make it look like it's from the federal government, and it confuses people. And what happened last year is a lot of people called, a lot of people switched out of their full coverage Medicare plan for this plan that they thought they were getting X, Y, and Z and bells and whistles, and they weren't getting any of it. And then there's all these calls of complaints and disenrollment and people feeling like they were like cheated almost. Absolutely. And we, we know it as agents and we tell our, our clients, we tell our community, but they're still really confusing. Because you see Joe Namath, you see these people on TV, and especially late night, but they're just, they're coming at you so hard that you start to wonder and believe it. And they'll get phone calls that say, hey, do you want to save some money? Would you like to bundle your services? And that sounds great. And within a matter of five minutes answering a couple of questions, they can switch you out of a full coverage Medicare plan into one that's less coverage that you might not be able to get back. So during AEP, the biggest tip I can tell anybody, and you said it at the beginning, you said, don't do Medicare alone. That's right. Do not make any changes without talking to your agent. And if you don't have an agent, like we said earlier, you know, find one, ask your kids, ask your colleagues, ask your pharmacists, uh, doctors, uh, financial planners. I mean, ask around for a reputable agent. Ideally, I think an independent agent, again, because we talked about that, they can fully be able to give you multiple options with multiple carriers, but just don't do anything alone. If you have questions, you know, like I'm happy to answer any questions. Just does this look right? I've had people call me and ask me about their parents' plans. I'm worried, you know, my parents are 80 and I don't know exactly what they're on. And I just want to make sure that they're, they have coverage. So we can look at plans we can, you know, find out just what they're on and what they may or may not be eligible for, but this is a time to do it during AEP. Um, if you wait until after AEP is over, you're stuck for the, for the rest of the year. Um, the thing about it is it's October uh, 15th to December 7th, and it is the busiest time of year for Medicare agents, Social Security office, and insurance companies. They all get really, really, really bogged down. So you have to anticipate those delays, and you don't wanna wait until the last minute. And so that's the biggest piece of advice too. You know, do it at the very latest towards the end of October, meet with someone. I say, get everything done if you can by Thanksgiving. And then you just have your holidays and whatnot, and you can, you know, make sure that all of your ducks are in order, but waiting until the last minute, you know, there's 60 million people on Medicare. 
And the Medicare website crashes often during this time because everyone is on it. So we wow. just want to give yourself time. Yeah. You want to give yourself time. During um, AEP, those beneficiaries who are on original Medicare and a supplement, nothing changes to the supplement plan. Again, because they're standardized. So it's not about that. It's not about the supplement plans. It is about the prescription drug plans. Okay. And they change dramatically. So actually, if someone is on a prescription drug plan or on a Medicare Advantage plan during September, so last month, they should have gotten an annual notice of change in the mail. This would be a document that's showing like the summary of the changes happening from this year to next year if they stay on that plan. So if they stay on their Advantage plan, here's the change of premium, here's the coverage change. Uh, doctors might fall out in network. So the doctors that they were seeing may no longer be in their network, which is a terrible thing for people. Like you have a relationship with your doctor and then he changes network. And if you don't know and switch into a plan where he's part of a network, you know, that could be a rude awakening. And that's really difficult to, I mean, doctors are just, you have a relationship with them. You want to keep them. Um, so those are some of the things that you might see. And with the prescription drug plan, the same thing. There might be a change, and I talked about formulary, there might be a change in those lists of medications that are covered. There might be a change in the premium. So we are seeing some prescription drug plans going from a $20 premium to a 70. Yeah. Which is a lot of money in one, you know, one month. So those are the type of things that we will look over and find other prescription drug plans that still suit the client's needs in terms of what they cover medically and their medications, but might be at a, a lower cost. But if you do nothing, you auto renew. If you don't, if you don't work with someone, if you don't look at your annual notice of change, if you don't recognize and, and do a little research to find out what may or may not change and you just stay with your plan and didn't realize, oh, the prescription drug plan's going up uh, X amount of dollars, $50 a month, then you're stuck with it. And that's a lot of money. Um, and worse off, it could be that your doctors are no longer on the plan or your medication is not covered. Yeah. So find an agent, talk through it with an agent and don't go at it alone for sure would be some of the big tips. And don't wait until that, that last week because yeah. it could just get really messy. Um, I just want to touch on if you do nothing, you are making a choice. It may, sure. I mean, I, I hate to say it, uh, just because I've, I've seen, had some recent personal experience. Um, doing nothing <laughs> is a choice. You are making a choice to put your head in the sand or not deal with it. When you can work with an independent Medicare agent that can give you the education and the resources and help you formulate the right decision. How would somebody Google, how would they find someone like you if they wanted to work with someone in their state? I want everybody to call you. I want your phone to explode and you've got to hire <laughs> people to take all the phone messages and help you. But uh, with that not happening, if someone is in another state, how do they find an agent like yourself? What do they search for? That's, that's a really good question, and I wish I had a better answer for you. Um, first, I'd say you can search for me, which is MedicareDana.com. I am licensed nationwide, um, and I will say, I, I will, I'm, not, I'm not in every single state right now, but I'm in a lot of them, and I have a network of people that if, if I am not licensed in that state, I can provide a, a handoff to someone that I know will take care of whoever calls me. Love that. Um, with that said, I think that referrals are so important. So like if someone does not know who to do, who to call, I would say find me and I will find someone in my network of, I participate in networks that are qualified. Uh, National Association of Health Underwriters, NAHU, is a very large organization nationwide that is specific to insurance. And it keeps up on regulations and keeps up on basically everything that you need frontline lobbying for Congress so that when there's changes made, we're on the front line. But within that, we've got a really powerful network of agents 
that offer that same quality and integrity to their clients. And this is all over the state. So I can find someone for anybody in a state that I know at least they're going to do good work for. Um, with that said, I mean, you can search for Medicare agent. The problem, unfortunately, which is why I said I wish I have a better answer for you, is that the, the market is so saturated, it's really hard to be able to tell who's an integral agent and who's not. And if you don't have someone, you know, kind of passing a referral to you or saying it's hard and where I don't want anyone to be fear-based, I do want people to be cautious because the senior population is such a targeted and scanned population. And, you know, if you just call someone, you can ask all of the right questions and the agent might answer them, but that doesn't mean that they're actually true. And I, I hate to say that, but, you know, an agent that doesn't really follow up with their clients isn't going to tell a client that. They're going to say, of course, I keep in touch with you. And of course, you can call me anytime. I mean, you just don't totally know what you're going to get with that. So I think that, you know, obviously a website that has reviews and things like that, but even, even at that, Genevieve, I mean, it's so easy for people to just make that up. I would really say find someone who's worked with someone or knows someone or um, like Nehu, like someone that's involved in a more national association that you, you can't, you know, you, you pay dues and you, there's a lot of integrity behind it. And, you know, insurance is regulated just like anything else. So there's CEs and all of that. But I would say really, I would just say, call me, okay. <laughs> email me and, and, um, you know, we can find someone in any state that someone's looking for. Um, and there's a lot of really goofy situations that happen as well. And so we're like a think tank. And I'm part of some really wonderful organizations and just industry um, people that have been around for a while or that, you know, we do lobby Congress and we've got some, some powerful people that if there are some really, there's some really interesting things that happen that we can get the right people and escalate where it needs to be. Social security makes mistakes. And when they make mistakes, you know, it's the person, the senior that can have their, I just had it happen where the social security made a mistake and someone's Medicare got basically turned off. They got disenrolled. And so they didn't have coverage because social security made a mistake. And now social security is trying to fix it on the back end, but this person is still uncovered. They're, they're uninsured right now because they haven't fixed that mistake. So, you know, there's so many people there's, you know, it's not like Social Security is losing sleep over the mistake they made for this person, where this person is losing sleep over the fact that if something happens tomorrow, they don't have insurance. So we deal with all, like so many interesting situations and having a wonderful kind of think tank, like I said, of, of people where we can bounce things off of and just escalate who've been in industry for a while or, you know, there's new people coming through is really helpful. So I guess I would say to your listener, if you're in a situation that feels like something went wrong or you're, you know, calling social security and you really, no one's giving you the right answer and you're getting, you know, turned around into circles, we could also help. Um, and it's important. We're doing a lot with Congress and we're doing a lot with our elected officials to bring them in because the seniors are really getting the short end of the stick when things like this happen. And in order to make change and in order to lobby for change, we have to be aware. And we're only aware if we hear stories from clients. And we can hear those stories and then we can bring it to, you know, our elected officials, our lobbyists who do meet with uh, the center, uh, CMS, Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services. We have people that are meeting with them that each year when they're coming out with the new, there's, there's great resources, by the way, on Medicare.gov. They're a little bit convoluted to find, but they are there. I have a lot of them on my website, medicaredana.com as well, um, because it's sometimes too convoluted on medicare.gov. And so it's easier to kind of pull them out. But um, part of me who, and part of the organization that I'm on as well is we have someone that sits with CMS to go over the Medicare and you guide and the changes and, and, and really be the customer voice and the consumer voice because we're the boots on the street, right? They don't really always know from top down. So 
in order to get your stories or goofy things that are happening to the people that can potentially actually make the change, we have to hear about them. Um, couple things. Go back and tell me the name of your association. It's the National Association of Health. Underwriters. Underwriters. N-A-H. Yes. Okay. I'm taking lots of notes, folks. I got four pages. I like of notes. it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make sure and in I the transcription I'm gonna put headings. So you know, if you're looking for something specific that you heard Dana say, you should be able to look. You should be able to scan through the transcript and find it. And I'm gonna I'm gonna link to a bunch of your blogs and she's got Dana. You've got so much great information on there. Um, and then the last thing I'm, I, I mean, we can still keep going, but, um, I just want to point out to, to the adults and the seniors that might be hearing this podcast. If you get a squishy feeling, if your flags are going off, just because the person comes across as nice, listen to your gut, uh, don't sign up. If just say, thank you for the information. I will get back to you or call me tomorrow. Just don't make a decision at that time. Follow your instinct, follow your gut, and don't sign over your Medicare. If you're, if you're thinking there's any doubt, get someone to help you. Yeah, a hundred percent. We have to, we got to look out for each other. It, it's the biggest thing, you know, when people are raising kids, they say it takes a village. And I think for everything, it really does. And we, we got to lean on each other and look out for each other, just like we would, you know, if, you know, someone came into a neighborhood and was, you know, robbing people's homes or, you know, there was crimes happening. I mean, in the same vein, we have to look out for each other because there are a lot of really, really real crimes that are happening to our seniors that are just more invisible and we can't see them as much. And so we have to keep looking out and looking out for them and looking out with them and protecting each other. What else do we need to cover, Dana? Oh, we covered a lot. Um, <laughs> I feel like- I think, uh, we may we may look back at this and think, oh, I forgot. Well, if that's the case, then we'll just do another one. Yes, I think we covered a lot for this one. And um, I do, I loved your advice of, you know, if you've got a weird feeling or just if you have questions, you know, ask. Um, there's a lot, I have a lot of videos on my website uh, that cover all different kind of areas. If you're working past 65, um, you know, how to enroll yourself in a prescription drug plan, how to understand Medicare.gov, what different, excuse me, rules are. So, you know, utilize those resources, but um, different things in the community, there's different, you know, seminars and workshops and things like that. So education is just really, you know, the most powerful thing to be able to make an informed decision. Informed. And if you're squishy about it, that's my new word today. Uh, <laughs> I like that don't word. Make, don't make, don't commit right then. Sleep on it. Just like you wouldn't buy a buy a car if you have your doubts about it, don't do it. It doesn't matter what they say. If you know your enrollment period, you've got till December seventh. Although we heard you say, Dana, don't wait. Get it get it don't done wait. before Turkey Day. I think that's the that's other right. message. But you know, you don't have to make a decision on a spot. You should not be pressured. This is too important for your well-being and your financial security and your mental health. I can't even imagine how Absolutely. stressful that would be if you found out you got on some plan that you had no intention of getting on to. Yeah, and I think the last thing I would say is that this is a federal program. And even though Advantage and prescription drug plans are not standardized, they're still part of the federal kind of umbrella in the sense of, of yeah. the fact that they're not standardized, but for part of this program, every agent should be telling you the same thing and backing it up by Medicare.gov. 
if, if okay. a client says, you know, can you send me the link? I can send them the link of where this information is for them to find it. If you are talking to three agents and they are telling me three different things, either all of them are wrong or two of them are wrong, right? So that's something to be also cognizant of. Great. Ask for the evidence. Yes. Dana, thank you. Uh, I learned a lot. Uh, I thought I, I probably thought I knew half of what you were going to talk about, but I didn't know half of it. So I am <laughs> really grateful to you and your time and getting the message out. And I'll do my best to get the show notes up and running. And, you know, so it's easy to find what people are looking for, for information, and then they will know how to reach you. Perfect. Well, thank you for the opportunity. And I'm, I'm so grateful, as I said at the beginning, to be part of you and your network and just supporting our communities and providing really valuable and honest information. Awesome. Have an excellent evening. Thank you. You too. Thanks for tuning in to the Listen for Life podcast. We hope you feel empowered and supported. Head over to listenforlifepodcast.com to see the show notes with links and information from today's episode. Do you have a topic, a resource to share, or a guest recommendation? Inquiring minds want to know. Let us know in the comments section. Wishing you a fabulous week.